I had a real treat the other day. I thought I'd share it with you. It was a 14-year-old female in with her mom. Uh, began orthodontic treatment in another state. Now coming down here, what to do? You know I'm not an orthodontist. I'm a periodontist. But we talk about the term director of dentistry, and that's what we're going to talk about today. How are we going to direct this case? That's what we'll talk about today on practical treatment planning. So she arrives, as you can see, she's in fixed uh, braces, uh, orthodontics on the upper arch. Um, things aren't exactly where they should be right now. You can tell that. But I want to take I want you to take a look at this in a little bit more detail. First of all, there's a size discrepancy between the teeth. Take a look. Take a look at tooth number eight. Now take a look at tooth number nine. You see how the teeth are different? Now, there's also a spacing discrepancy if you look at the pontic space of tooth number 10 and compare that to potentially the pontic space or whatever we're going to do with the peg lateral. And by the way, we're going to keep the peg lateral if we, if we can because certainly that's the most conservative treatment we can do. There's a spacing discrepancy there. Let's take a look at the occlusion and you'll see that only these teeth are in occlusion, nothing else. And more importantly, there's no canine guidance. Okay, now I'm a general dentist. We're going to refer to the best orthodontist we can in order to be able to take care of the problem. We need to give both the patient and the orthodontist some guidance, and we can do that. You know, director of dentistry. Okay, let's, let's direct what's going to happen. That doesn't mean the orthodontist doesn't have the ability to do what, what he or she wants to do. But we want to make sure that we're letting the orthodontist know from a restorative perspective what we need. So what do you want? Well, certainly from a cosmetic standpoint, we want equal spacing. We want the size of number seven and the size of number 10 to be the same. So eventually if we put an implant in number 10 and we crown the peg lateral onto number seven, those teeth look the same. But we've got this special consideration here, don't we? Tooth number eight is wider than tooth number nine. And so we have to position number eight and nine as if they were the same. That means we're going to have to open up a little bit of a diastema. We'll have to see what the most favorable position is. But we'll have to open up a little bit of a diastema between numbers eight and nine so that when we finally restore number nine, it's the same size as number eight. You see what we're looking for. And this is where diagnostic wax up is, um, can be can be important. These days, diagnostic wax-ups can be done virtually, though, can't they? So the whole idea as we're looking at this patient is what do we envision the final smile to look like, even though we've got uh, spaces that are, that are they're not the same right now, and get the teeth into occlusion. Now, what's the final consideration? Final consideration may be, what are we doing about the zenith on tooth number eight and tooth number nine? Okay, the zenith on tooth number eight is a little bit shorter than that on number nine. Number nine, you could say that might be a little bit of gingival recession or perhaps the position of the enamel against, uh, against the soft tissue causing a little bit more what would look like a longer tooth on number nine. We're not going to call it recession, but a longer tooth on number nine than number eight. Uh, and now, if you take a look at the smile line, she has a low smile line, so it's not as much of a consideration. But later on, certainly, we can put in a soft tissue graft. So what are we going to ask the orthodontist to do? Number one, we're going to ask for the orthodontist to get these teeth into occlusion. Number two, we want the spacing equal in the number seven pontic area and the number 10 pontic area. Number three, we want uh, canine guidance, which is part of getting the occlusion. Uh, number four, we want to make sure that the position of eight and number nine are such that we can restore number nine with a simple composite on the mesial or perhaps a composite on the mesial and distal in order to be able to make tooth number nine look like tooth number eight. Okay, and then finally we'll put crowns on number seven and we'll put an implant in number 10. We'll wait, we'll wait a few years. She's only 14 years old. We're not going to do this until she's 16, 17, 18. Um, and what do I do? I asked her, has, she, has her clothing size uh, uh, change. And we looked at specific articles of clothing and they haven't changed recently in the past couple of years. So she may have reached uh, full potential and we may be able to put an implant in a little bit earlier than, than, um, 
than than on others. Certainly, implants can be placed earlier on girls than they can on boys. Boys, I, I wait to the age of, of 20 before I'll put an implant in a boy. Girl, 16, 17, 18, depending upon uh, the growth pattern and whether the growth has changed at all. With that, we then can give the orthodontist guidance as to what we need in order to be able to provide the best restorative result possible. Now, what happens with if we don't like the gingival discrepancy? Well, at the time we do the implant on tooth number 10, we can do a subepithelial connective tissue graft number 9 and then do gingivoplasty number 8 and 9 if we need to <coughs> in order to be able to get the, get the, um, the gingival lines uh, coincident. We don't do that unless the patient needs it. Okay, So this gives you some thought. How do we look at a case? How do we set up this case? How do we talk with the parents? How do we communicate with the orthodontist in order to be able to provide the best result possible? We do not stop the orthodontic treatment. And the agreement that we have with the orthodontist is the orthodontic treatment stops when we're all agreed, the people who are involved in the case, which in our case will be uh, orthodontist, periodontist, restorative dentist. We're all agreed that we like the spacing. That's when the braces come off. Hope you enjoyed this. This is fun for me. I usually see older adults. I got to see a 14-year-old. Hope everything's going well for you. And thanks for subscribing. We have doubled our subscribers in a very, very short period of time.